everyone this is Artie the vintage stitcher <clears throat> um I am filming this video on a Sunday March 7th so if you kind of notice that the shirt is the same as the video that was put out on Sunday it's because I filmed them on the same day but I'm putting this video out will probably be my Monday video <clears throat> I have been busy cleaning and springifying the whole house I don't know if that's a word or not but um, totally in the mood to um, get things set up for spring and fresh air and open windows and everything. So I've been kind of pulling out all my spring decor and I thought it would be fun to show you some of the cross stitches that I have finished or some of the projects that I have finished over the years that I love to pull out every year and decorate with. Now, some of them are old, old, old. <clears throat> I did them 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So the finishing and the framing is a little bit rough, primitive, simple, but they're projects that I still love looking at every single day. Um, so I, I love pulling them out. I love seeing where I was and what I've done. And you can kind of tell throughout the years, um, the different styles of finishing and framing and different styles of cross stitch and that sort of thing. Um, most of these, I cannot tell you fabric counts. I cannot tell you colors. Um, I probably can't even tell you what the pattern was or where I got it from. A lot of them um, were freebies. A lot of them were older patterns that I had. Some of them you can you can kind of tell who who designed them and that sort of thing. But I just kind of wanted to go through these. Um, so the, I'm not going to start in any kind of chronological order. I've got a stack over here and a stack over here, and I'm just going to kind of go through them, and then you'll get to see kind of my style of stitching and my my decorating style for in my home for spring. So with that said, um, let's get started. This is, this is one of my favorites. And I think I did this maybe two years ago. It was in um, one of the Prim Stitcher magazines. So this is, and my home is very kind of these colors. So I decorate with fall colors throughout, throughout the year. I'm a lot of browns and beiges and burnt oranges, that sort of stuff. Um, the next one is a Little House Needleworks. And I've been meaning to reframe this one for a while. It's just a little bit too, too close. So I may get around to reframing that. But you know what? It's all right, too. This is just a small one. I think this is in like a four by six frame. This one, I think, was a freebie online, and I did this one, oh my goodness, it has to be at least 10 years ago, this one. And it says, in everything, give thanks. So I know those are pumpkins, and I know it's kind of a Thanksgiving theme, but um, it's very suited for, for my house. Let's have that one. This one um, is a prairie schooler. You can kind of tell these were little animals. I think I did them, if you look up close, I did them on Ada. I have, I did these so many years ago. And um, the frame came from my mom's house. My mom had a lot of um, barn decor and she decided she didn't like this frame. So, and I like it because it's kind of a bowl shape. It's kind of really neat, very rustic. So this is one of my favorite pieces that I, I love to pull out every year. Um, and like I said, it's old. It's really old, but I love it. So I have that. And then I have this one. And I think this one was in a Prim Stitcher magazine also. It's called Sheep Farm. And it was one of those, I was framing it, popping it into a frame, and there was just too much gap. So this is just a little piece of chicken wire fabric that I added, because I improvise a lot. 
but I do love this one too. And then this one, um, this one is really old too. Um, I'm not even sure. And this one says, give us this day our daily bread. And this one is always in my dining room. So that is, and then I have new framed stuff that I've shown you um, recently. So I've got like my Emma's garden, my peace sampler, my bluebird sampler, and then the Easter parade that I just finished. So those, that's kind of my wall decor. Don't put a lot I don't, I'm not a knickknacky. I'm not overly, I overly decorated. I don't, um, I, I, I'm very minimalistic, but yet I like the cozy country cottagey feel. So those are, those are my wall decor ones. Now the, and I think I've told you in past videos last year with two, 2020 being the way it was, all I could really kind of get a handle on was smalls. I really, I couldn't do anything larger than pillows or something tiny. So I have a whole basket of smalls that I'm going to show you. And um, most of them were done last year because that's pretty much all I could focus on was smalls. And again, um, I'm not sure where the patterns came from. All the fabrics were used in, from my stash. All the threads were used from my stash. I really, I, I wasn't in a shopping mood last year. I just basically worked out of Prim Stitcher magazines, freebies, the smalls that I had on on hand, and I didn't I didn't do a ton of shopping, but I got I feel like I got a lot accomplished, especially when it's all in in one basket here. <laughs> I'm like, oh boy, I did I did a lot more than I thought I did, and I have a lot more than I thought I had. So the first one is I think this was um, one of those pieces in time. And there was something up here, some weird design that I really didn't like. So I left it out and I just put a, a ribbon bow there. So, and I just finished this into just a basic pillow. A lot of these are just little tuck-ins that I, I put in baskets or um, bowls around my house. This is one, this is a prairie schooler. Everybody, I, everybody knows this one. I've done this one several times because it, it's a fun quick stitch and you can make it up. And I was practicing with Rick Rack. You can kind of see, practicing with Rick Rack in different finishing styles. This just has a cute little backing on the back. Let's see here. This one was a little freebie from a waxing moon design. And there were words up here. I, I forget whether it was whether it was like a Valentine stitch or something, but I didn't like the words. And the the flowers were in pinks and I, I'm not a pink. So I changed out the flower colors and then I was practicing with chenille. So I put little chenille on the edge and then this is the back. I love that little print of fabric. So that was a freebie from Waxing Moon Designs right off their website, and I love it. Love it, love it. This one is an older, I think it's a Prairie Schooler. I don't, please don't quote me. And this one I did, oh my God, this one has, is probably at least, at least 15 years old. And this one, just kind of a basic finish. I wanted it tufted, so I took just a little a little button and tufted it, and there's the backing fabric. So that one just kind of hangs off a doorknob, little hanger, super, super cute, love it. These are my colors. These are the colors in my home. Let's see here. My other favorite thing to <laughs> use is um these fabric balls basically they're just styrofoam balls and this was i needed some filler stuff last year um for in baskets so what i did was i had all these styrofoam balls from when i used to make christmas ornaments and they were just piling up i mean i had tons of them so i picked out some fabrics just basic fabrics and i 
ripped them so that it was, um, I ripped them in strips and then I just rolled the fabrics around, secured them with a pin, and I, now I put them in a bowl. And I've got lots of them. And they're great. This one is just kind of a really raggy ball. But I use these um, for fillers in my baskets. And I, there's a whole bunch of them in here. But they're super light. Um, and they're great. They're kind of a primitive rag ball. So those, those are something I made last year. That was like one of my first um, quarantine projects. <laughs> because I went through and I kind of redecorated everything and wanted wanted like a fresh new look on everything. So I made, those were one of my things that were on my to-do list for a long time. And I sat down and did them. Okay, so this also goes, this is a prairie schooler too. This one was the same pattern as this. So, but this is the squirrel. And I think he's so cute. And you can see my finishing is not perfect. It's crooked. And, you know, these, I've made these years and years ago before I really, like, learned to enjoy finishing. And this has the same fabric on the back. And I, I love little buttons. I'm always collecting little buttons. I put them on everything. So, then this one is a little embroidery. I just was into into like embroidery, kind of some primitive stuff, traced it out, put a little backing on it, and it gives a little different texture to like your your baskets and stuff. A little just a little visual change. So, and I know I've got another one in here. This one is one of my spring ones, and I forgot I even made it. And I this came out of um, Primitive Stitch Magazine, one of the spring issues that I had. This is so cute. Love it, love it. Again, I was kind of experimenting with different finishing styles, so I had put a piece of fabric on the bottom, but it just wasn't quite, oops, wasn't quite blingy enough, so I added the bow with the little crystal button little crystal button and then this is the fabric on the back I love this fabric so much I made myself a, ma a face mask with it <laughs> I wear it to work all the time because I thought if I'm gonna if I have to wear a mask I'm gonna like the way it looks so that one was from primitive stitch magazine and that was just a quick stitch too a lot of these I was stitching in a night and then I'd stack up all these finishes and then I'd spend the whole day like on a Saturday um, finishing and it was fun. I felt like I was getting so much accomplished and I was filling up my little bowls and it was all, it was good. Cause then I felt like I was doing something productive um, when we were all kind of stuck at home and couldn't go anywhere. So this um, again was just a freebie and it says, please enter your pin. And I just had don't even ask me where I got this pink Ada fabric from. I had a little tiny piece in my stash. This was just like, um, uh, I had one skein or half a skein of some fancy floss. And that's all that was to that. Again, that pink floral fabric that I love so much. So I made a little pin cushion. Super cute. This one was also from the Prim Stitcher magazine last year. It was the little bunny. I'm not sure if it was from, it was from one of the Prim Stitcher magazines, not necessarily last year's. It was, you know, from one of them in the spring from the beginning of when she, I don't even know which one. But this one was fun. And this one I just backed with some basic beige fabrics. And then this, I don't know if it was from the Prim Stitcher magazine or if it was a freebie, but I know now, I think the chart is for sale now. Um, I just, I don't remember the designer, 
but this was one, it was a real quick one too. And I was practicing with Rick Rack and buttons to see how, how I liked working with that. And this has, oops, this has a cute little blueprint. So that was a cute one. Loved that. <clears throat> Let's see here. This one, this one is a treasured piece. My, I didn't make it. My friend Monica made it for me. Oh my God, it's got to be 30 years old. She gave it to me back in 2002 or 2003. So it's old and um, it holds a special place in my heart. And it was this little finish. And like I said, I know it's a fall one, but it comes out every year. Now it will stay out from now until Christmas because I just love looking at it. And she did the finishing herself and it's just, it's one of my favorite, favorite pieces. Love it. Okay. Um, another little embroidered or red work. I had done it years ago and it was sitting in a pile and I was in a finishing mood and I just finished it up. Cute little red fern fabric on the back. I don't know if it'll, if it'll focus in. Again, very kind of primitive. Fun. I like my, I like my pillows and stuff, um, stuffed a little firmer. A lot of people like them um, lighter and squishier. Some people, I like mine a little firmer. So that's just a personal choice. This one was a freebie. Um, I don't even remember where I got it. And it had this really, really pretty skein of fancy floss. I don't even remember what it was called, um, but I wanted to use it in the worst way. And then it had some funky design in the center that I really did not like. So all I did was I did the outside part that I liked the and the heart and the design and then I put a little leaf um, leaf button and it's tufted and that's the back of it and then practicing with chenille again. So that's also one of my favorites. They're all my favorites. Otherwise, I would have gotten rid of them. Basically, if I don't like something, I put it out on my table or in my basket or I display it and then um my son and his wife will come over usually it's them but any of the kids will come over and say oh I love that that's so cute I'm like take it home it's all yours <laughs> so so if I really don't like something I, they just somebody comes and calls dibs on it and um then they get it I have um <clears throat> a funny story I've got more to show you but a funny story was about five years ago, um, we were purging. I was purging because I had hundreds of quilts that I had made over the years. They were piled up everywhere. Hundreds of quilts, hundreds of placemats, hundreds of wall hangings. And I mean, it was just piles and piles of stuff. And I was running out of room for it. <clears throat> so what I did was I knew we were having a huge family get together for Thanksgiving. And my husband and I have five children. He has three, I have two. And then my sister has three kids and they're all grown and married and off on their own. So all these kids were coming home for Thanksgiving at our house and they were all kind of starting out in life, starting out with their first homes, their first apartments, their first everything. So what I did was I took everything that I wanted to get rid of and I piled it on the guest bed and as they came in and as they left, I told them, go in there and pick what you want. You know, be considerate of others, but um, there was so much stuff. And all the girls, the boys weren't as, the boys weren't as thrilled with it as the girls were, but all the girls um, went out with armloads, armloads of quilts and table runners and pillows and everything that I had made. And it was such a good feeling for me that they they were just like completely over the moon with all of this stuff. So fast forward like to the next summer and I would go visit 
my nieces or my nephew and his wife, um, my son and his wife, my, my, you know, and I'd see my stuff being displayed in their house, being used in their house. The quilts were being drug around by the kids and used on the couch and used in bed and the wall hangings were up on the walls and the table runners were on the tables and it just made me feel so good <clears throat> that they loved that stuff so much to take a piece of me and take it home and cherish it and love it and use it and um I know a lot of people would be, you know, quilters would be appalled by some of the things you've seen. Because I've seen them. They were on floors. They were on the back of the couches. Their pets were laying on it. But that's what they're for. That's what they're for. Use it. Love it. Remember it. You know, um, I always feel like when you're cuddled up in my quilt, just know that auntie or mom or grandma is just giving you a big hug and I want you to use it. And if it wears out, it wears out. I'll make you another one. Um, I know a lot of people get offended because the, their pets are laying on a quilt. Quite honestly, my dog lays on the bed. She lays on the furniture. She has her own special quilt. We lay them all over the floor. My pet is part of my family and I it doesn't bother me that their pets are really on the quilts and getting used. I, I just love it. So, okay, back to, back to um, showing you what I have for spring. But that's the story. That's how I feel about my handmade items. I really want them used. I want them loved. I don't want them stored away in containers or cedar chests. I want them out and worn and used and, um, I can always make you more. I will always make more. I've got lots of life ahead of me. I'm going to make more. So with that said, this is another um, little item from my bestie, Monica. She made it for us for Christmas one year. And it's this cute little orch basket. And she stitched the top. Isn't that cute? And it flips up. It's got a little lid. And it's a little basket. So I don't use it for orts. I just use it to display things. So and it's got the little handles on it. It is so cute. So, so cute. So that's another one of my little treasured items. And then this was just a little freebie. Little freebie. Um, I was needed to practice um, my finishing techniques. So this is like a flat board. Want to practice this? I practiced um, homemade cording. So it's not perfect, but you know what? I like it. It tucks in someplace really nice. These are my initials, AC. Oh, let's see what else I got. This one was. I think this was in Prim Stitcher. I'm not sure. And it's the Queen and King of May. And I made this for my husband and I will be, um, we were married in May. So I thought this was suitable for us. Little finish for me. And this is just finished with that same primitive background. I love that. I love that fabric. I think I've got maybe a couple more yards of it, but I use it a lot. Let's see what else I've got here. This one was another freebie, I think, or in Prim Stitcher. I'm not sure where it came from. Little sheep. I know it's got snowflakes on it, but I still like it. I still put it out for, for um, spring and summer. I like the little flowers like the little sheep. I just think he's adorable. This one I was practicing with pom-poms. So you can kind of see. There you go. See the pom-poms. This one has a dark green backing. I love it. Um, this one is another one that Monica, my friend Monica, made for us. She did these for Christmas. 
um, we have a stitching group. We haven't met since the COVID, but um, every year for Christmas, we, we would exchange gifts. And it was usually like a little handmade something. And she made these one year. Look how cute that is. And I think these are, um, I'm not sure what pattern those are, but look how tiny they are. She did like one over one. And then we have, she put a little jar. It's a, it's a box like this. She put a magnet here for our scissors or our needles. And then just a little jar, jelly jar fits in there. So you can put pens or pencils or whatever. And she finished the boxes. And I just think they're so stinking cute. Oh, that's a little magnet too for like needles and stuff like that. I mean, she, she goes all out for us for Christmas. I was just, I feel, always feel so fortunate um, when she makes us a Christmas gift. So that is one that I treasure and I put out every year. This one is one I stitched it years and years and years ago and had it in a frame. And it just looked bad. It just looked bad. I could never really find a good spot to put it and I didn't like the matting on it and it just looked bad. So I took the took it apart and I finished it into a little pillow. And it's got this little cute little fabric on the back. All my stuff has threads on it. I don't have cats and my dog doesn't shed, but um, we have threads everywhere. So, so that is my little live simply. And I love that phrase. That's one of my favorite phrases. Let's, I try and um, feel blessed with what I have and not always covet more. And um, I think that's a, that's a great reminder. So that goes out every year. Then this was also a freebie. A mother's love is pure. I thought that was so cute. And that's just in a red and black. Again, pom-pom finish. And then this cute little red fabric. So here. And then I have one more. One more. And this, this is very rough. The finishing on it is very rough. But I was wanted to learn how to make... I wanted to do learn how to finish boxes. So back in one of my previous videos I had showed you like the sampler maker with the, the salmon box that I refinished and stuff this was the beginning of my box phase so I did the sister stitcher and this was like a little um flip top box I don't even know where what came in it so I covered it and it's very primitive because it kind of creaks and squeaks and cracks but I finished it with some board, put a little button in there, some rickrack, just trimmed it out, covered the bottom. Like I said, it's not, it's just cute. I like it. It doesn't, it doesn't close all the way anymore because, you know, I added, added this and stuff like that. But it was a good learning experience. Um, it was good to figure out to to do something like this and figure out okay what I needed to do where I needed to go from or what I where I needed to start from and go to on how to finish these boxes and how to um, advance my skills a little bit so kind of everything you've seen today is practice I was practicing finishing I practice on my stuff so that when I do for clients everything's perfect so that is kind of a parade of what I will be decorating my home with for the next few months. And I thought, um, instead of doing a home tour, I just kind of do a project parade for you. So with that said, I hope, um, hope you enjoyed just a little glimpse into what I have done over the past, well, 20 years. Um, and I'm looking forward to more to come and more to add and more stories to tell you. And I will see you soon. 
In the meantime, be kind, spread love, and find peace.